Hey, Tim, Rich, Crazy J, Caroline C. Oh, hello, Caroline. And John Lockhart was here earlier, I think. Uh, let's see. Boots. Passes. Check. Hmm. Frustrating when you're dealing with boards that you're just not 100% sure about. Um, you sort of scour around looking for them and you get them occasionally. It helps to know certain people. Uh, yeah, it just... You get lucky. Put it that way. Oh, we get my UHF out of the way. Make sure... Nope. Okay, I'll do. And stay there. No. Uh, let's see. Liquid damage bars removed. I'm gonna have a look at that one. I don't know why they'd remove the bias. Hey, Cormac. Ah, okay. Christopher, Marty, Martin. Oh, ah, Yankov's here. Hello, Yankov. New Russian guy is writing left hand from top to bottom. Funny enough, I've got to write from top to bottom with a lot of things. It's the only way. Otherwise, you smear too much stuff. I can just I'd see where this person... Holy dooly, what have they done here? Okay, so we have a... They removed the BIOS. They certainly did. And that's it floating there. And that looks like a 3V42 rig. Oh, it is. They've, what the hell... Alright, I think we found our challenge of the day. This is a 165, which makes it even more challenging than a 3437. Let's see what other catastrophe. Wow. Wow. That is a good amount of flux. Liquid damage, bias removed. Hmm. No kidding. Now it's getting to the point where it's flux damaged. Whoa, what happened here? Did they stuff up the thunderbolt? Very rarely do you dig under this shit. Holy sh shoot. Okay. So what they've done here is they've left the flux on for too long. And the flux has started to actually eat some copper. Backlight's completely... Wow. Yep. I think this is going to be a fun little project. Oh, damn camera. Damn it. Is that... Yeah, camera died on me. Come on. Come on, camera. Come on. There we go. Alright, okay, here we go. Let's let's go with this again. So, I'll just pop the thunderbolt off and see how it's got the green tinge. It means it's chewing some copper somewhere. Bat light is a complete nutter. Someone's been trying to do it themselves. Didn't do it so well. Yeah, the bias is on the wrong side of the board and in the wrong place and not soldered. We've got this really gooey flux everywhere. 3v42 looks like, I'm pretty sure that's 3v42. Looks like it had been removed and replaced. But not, I don't know, it could be something else. Not 100% sure. Oh, yeah, that's it down there. That's where you belong. You do not, and that's half coming off. That's been burnt to hell. Looks like someone's got a high temperature. What they've got here is a one of those cheap hot air stations, the ones with the blower and the handle, and you can't get enough heat, you know, thermal warming capacity into the board, so you keep cranking the temperature up, and because you do that, it burns things before it actually heats things up. We've got a resistor hanging off the side here, trying to be a good sport and short out things. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy this one. It's got that feeling about it. Feeling of fun. Can you feel it too? Off. Oh, what? How did they break the camera connector off? Alright, now it really is going to be fun. That is not an easy connector to put back on without melting other things. Yeah. This one has... Yeah. This one has definitely been subjected to some things. And that's just on the top side. Let's have a look on the bottom side. Let's see. 
You never know, it might still work. That's going to be a challenge. Challenges are good. Okay, that is my fault, that piece of paper. That's from an iPhone. Well, they did use Flux at least. I'll grant them that. We've got a few brakes here. That pad there is gone, they'll need repairing. Backlight hilariously, the ball is fine. It always cracks me up. So many other things go wrong, but the backlight ball is fine. I think this will be a worthy contender of... Oh no, did they try to reflow the RAM? So we've got the flux all here. It makes me think that they tried reflow. Did they squish them down? Did you get squished down? Thankfully it seems okay. Yeah, this will be good. This will be good. Oxyacetylene, that'll do it. Uh, what I'm probably going to first do is get rid of the bulk of the excess flux there. Because I don't know how it's going to behave when it heats up. This thing's been sitting around a while. I guess we should take a BIOS chip. And our 3V42. Let's see that. Hey, Sabatino. Your Darko here, too? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Caterson, no, I actually just came back. Lewis Rossman was doing his stream for about eight hours again, so he just finished up, and I thought. I'll um, jump in. I'm just trying to suck up some of this excess flux. Honestly, it's almost like Lewis... Maybe this is a board from Lewis five years ago or something. And it's secretly made its way to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that resistor went. That resistor's gone. I don't think we'll be seeing that resistor again. Fortunately, the flux doesn't seem to smell too obnoxious, so that's good. You can get some fluxes when you start burning them off. They can let off some really unfortunate smells. Kind of like if you had a bad meal the night before. Uh. Like I said, this is more just to flush off the unknowns as much as I can. By the way, did anyone get to see if uh, the USB port transplant on the A1466 that Lewis was doing was a success or not? Because I know he burnt the hell out of the SD port, but I didn't get to see much else. Hey, what the? Do you know there is a fat pizza? Yeah, I've heard of fat pizza, but I don't know much anything about it. I don't, haven't ever followed that, whatever it was. Alright. That should get us started. Hey, German Vargas. So, okay, Stuart, so you got it all working? That's good. Well, you know, I say that's good, but that's just my proper self-talking there, whereas 
my inner child is saying damn all right so let's put this bias back on we'll orientate the board vertically now I don't know if this bias is any good but I'm gonna put it back on anyway Jacob is about the same here was certainly close enough. Thing is, we've been already been through half a week of it, and we've got another w at least one week to go, and it's going to persist in being like that, and up to about the the low 40s, up until around about March, April. Okay, this pad is actually full of bad lead free solder so I'm just gonna uh, I think I'm just gonna not care and I'm gonna put the bias chip down and squeeze out those balls okay so there's our pin one corner there that makes no sense that doesn't even line up What's going on here? It's a one one six five board. All in. So we've got pin one there in towards the chip, which would be damn it! Now I've got too much flux on that top. Hey Aussie geek. He removed one from the donors. He agreed to remove it your way so he wouldn't damage it. Okay. Actually... Is that physically damaged or is it just... No, it's just some junk. I saw him removing the first one. And he did seem to do a reasonable job of it. Oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was being an idiot. I was trying to install it this way, which is the wrong way. It's got to go this way. No wonder nothing lined up for me. That's what was cooking my brains. I was sitting there and I'm like, I'm living in a mirror universe here right now. Because I was off by 90 degrees. I'll be very surprised if this board works again, but I'm actually quite looking forward to trying to do it. Yeah, sicky I did. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I know. I was, it was really stupid. <laughs> yeah, the things you do. Come on, heat up. Normally I wouldn't bother taking these balls off the edge of the BIOS, but um, it's a little bit out of alignment, and because I had the large amount of solder underneath, I kind of want it to rest back into a more natural position again. Uh, it's cooled down fast. Okay, that's fine. Okay, our, our 3v42 area is a complete disaster, which is an understatement of the day. They've, looks like they've shifted that as well. Uh, Stuart, yeah, the the care with removing 
of the original is not so much for the sake of the port, it's for the sake of the ports around it. Because, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find. Oh, well. Yeah, because if you cook that up too much, you completely kill your SD port, and then you sort of kill this port here, which is your uh, display port. So that's why you've got to be careful with it. Like I said, the actual USB port you couldn't give two hoots about. At least until you're trying to extract one from another board. Uh, this is going to be a... Th yeah, the person who had this doesn't... I'm pretty sure they had one of those cheap Weeha... Or not Weeha... Um, Yoohoo or whatever all-in-one combo units. And it just doesn't have the amount of heat required to handle MacBook boards. Because you can see all the pads are getting quite cold there. I'm just clean wiping everything here. We've got a fair bit of work to do down there. That's going to be fun because it looks like a few of them are corroded. This is probably where the real problem was all along, but they've gone and created a bit more of a mess for me. That looks like it's down to... is that coming back? Uh, coming back like Backstreet Boys. Uh, you don't want to come back either. Yeah, Richard, the air conditioning is definitely working overtime here. This is just the dual input diode. Oh yeah, that just crumbled away. Again, this is just a free sort of board that I received. So it it's not necessary for a machine, it will just go into my stock of wards that I use if I encounter a no-fix situation but the person still wants to have a working machine so at that point you can go well I've got these other boards that we could use if you're interested I prefer to rep I certainly prefer to repair the person's original board because then you, know, you retain the same you know, serial numbers and all that sort of stuff. That V is gone. Hopefully that's just a test pad. But sometimes, yeah, you do have to go and put a replacement board in. And rather than just getting an entirely new one, you can use one of your existing pre-refurbished ones. Uh, Siki, you might not get our heat, but we don't get your cold, so fair's fair. I mean, I don't think many people would, from this area would handle the sort of cold that a lot of other people in the world deal with. I didn't take that diode out. Ah, stop putting solder back on that pad. Yeah, we're only a week into summer, I know. It's pretty scary. Christmas is around about the worst, initially. Because at least 
around here once we get to Christmas that's when the rain often starts to really start happening if we're going to get rain the last five or six years we've not really had any rain so I guess we're just praying for a Christmas miracle as it were some people wish for snow we wish for rain Uh, that's burned through. Uh, that's a dead pad there, so I have to be reconstructed. Probably with some wire. This isn't looking a hell of a lot better. That's gone through the layer. Fantastic. Just what I always wanted. Two million hectares burnt in New South Wales in the past two months. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous the amount of land that goes up in flames in Australia. Especially considering we're a fairly uh, non-forested country in general. Try and decide whether I should start transplanting some parts onto there just to fill up spaces or yeah, let's clean up this corrosion that's hiding under the layer. Like a bad rotten tooth. Fortunately this is been 3v42 section it's not like it's got lots of secrets about it or anything like that it's fairly straightforward thankfully but it is critical so we do need to clean it up properly hey spox repair thank you yes doing well Hey Dirk, how's it going? Oh, Space Cookies is here. And Roll. Hey Giffany, and Tranquil. It is, you know, I get stuck into things a bit here and I lose track of everybody. Alright, so we need a donor. Let's see. What have we got here? We've got 3437, isn't it? 34, no, it's a 165. Not that it really matters for these sections being a 165 or a 3437 most of these sections are basically cut paste copies of each other between the two sort of um, boards but it doesn't hurt to try and stick with the same board anyway especially when you have got plenty of the same hey Paul Bradley That, that. Okay. So really at this stage, the board that we're working on, we are simply acting in the janitor mode, as is often said. What we're doing is repairing the damage we can see. We're not doing any sort of diagnostic work as such. It's just a case of see damage, fix damage. And then when we get to the end of all this, if it's unfortunately not working that will be the point where we have to start doing actual brain work and if we're lucky we don't have to do any brain work Whew. 
Thank you, Travis. Yes, uh, for those of you who do this sort of stuff on a daily basis, if you want to partake in the open board data project, that'd be really good. It does at this point require that you have some knowledge of Git, how to make pull requests. But even if you don't, you can still submit data to me. Just email me the figures. The more people we can have doing this, the quicker we can get some decent data and the less we have to rely on other dubious sources. Yeah, I think I will actually not put that on until I've sorted out these areas here. That was a little bit premature. I'll just stick you up the top. Do I sell donor boards? I do not. Uh, I just get mine mostly from AliExpress. And then every now and then I get lucky and someone offers me a couple. Depending on the type of the board, it will either cost me a little bit or not. Ah, oh, crikey. Come on, mate. Keep your brains on. Right. Big one before the... Yeah, that's you there. It's no good. I thought it was coming up all right, but it's decided it's changed its mind. It's taken it back. It's actually behaving quite interesting. It'll go through a phase where it seems happy to take the solder and then all of a sudden it'll oxidize off. It's like there's... I don't know. It's probably just me. I if I get the crusty solder off the tip. Okay, that, that's feeling a bit better. love these holes. Yeah. Uh, not much of a cynic as uh, Lewis. I guess it depends uh, what area specifically are you referring to in terms of cynicism. Are you talking about say the quality of Apple products or something else? The life in general? The great thing about opinions in life in general is that everyone thinks they're a moderate. When it comes to humans I'm quite cynical. But then again I would say I'm a realist. That's the word I was after. Everyone thinks they're a realist. Even if they say they're not, they ultimately think they are. Uh, 
Emil, what are you doing here? Hey, Surf Maroma. Oh, that's a terrible join. But we'll get to that later. I'm pretty sure that's a test pad. Yep, it's a test pad. Okay, do we have that resistor? We do. And we've got the two vertical resistors to go. Normally I'd take both at once, but I think for the moment I'll just do one at a time. Dip it in some flux. The second one. Life in general, maybe New York City is grinding him down. Uh, well, I think. I mean, life in general just grinds you down, doesn't it now? As a general rule, I expect the worst. Which is why I have a lot of anxiety issues. Particularly when it comes to my fur kids. And I guess you could say, is that being cynical or is that being paranoid? I mean, what would be the difference in definition there? I mean, to be fair, New York City is probably the ideal place for that sort of thing to truly grow, which is why Ghostbusters was well placed to be there. Fueling off all the great cynical energies. There, Travis. Oh, right. You're one of the few people in that case that actually can give the perspective on both sides because because I do not have human children and no great urge for them at all. Um, you know, when you talk to people about your fur kids or your kids, then those with human children will scoff at you and go, well, you don't have human children, so you don't know. And you sort of kind of left without a comeback on that because you're like, well, that's what you say is technically correct, but is it factually correct? I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of curious if those traces need to be fixed up because they're all no stuff here. So like this one here, there's a broken trace there and the, uh, that one I'll have to fix up. That's, uh, but this section here, I probably don't have to. And uh, now we've got to move all this stuff across. Hey Swift Rick. By the way, Swift Rick, the name is Paul. You can call me Daniels. Or Jack. But yeah, the first name is actually Paul. Don't take it personally, it's just... I correct people now whenever that comes up, only because of the fact that... It it's the right thing to do. So at least people then, you know, don't have the embarrassment seven years later when they go, holy crap, all this time I thought your name was Daniel. You thought my name was Daniel Daniels? What sort of sick parents do I have?
Uh, my parents are cool. I know a lot of people don't get to say that, but my parents are cool. They did a superb job of raising me, and I feel like I've actually let them down because I'm not a filthy rich person at this point. But they invested quite a lot of money in me. And what have I done in return? Eh, not a lot. I get abused by some New Yorker and I have a moderate following on YouTube and I barely make a living. Yeah. That, that's one way to make your parents feel great about everything they invested in you. Maybe that's why I'm sticking with fur kids. Jim, how do you feel about um, Oreo being in the store at night? Ah, uh, damn it. Which way does this go? Time to bring up the board view and schematic and find out. Okay, so this is the capacitor here and ground is on our left side. So, well, that answers, pardon me, that answers that. Let's see, the lethal one. I feel bad for my parents. They raised me for 23 years and all I do in return is nearly die. Yeah, that was very selfish of you, Anel. You should have thought about that before you tried jumping under that truck. Different expectations for different time. Our parents lived in a different world. That they certainly did, yes. But I guess we all have challenges. Everybody has challenges. Oh, Travis, I hope they are. But, uh... Jim, you're somewhat concerned about Oreo? Yes, I concur. It is not really... To be honest, I wouldn't have expected Lewis to do that, but, you know, I, that's their choice, as long as Oreo is safe. But it is a concern to me. I'm not sure what the mindset is, and I'm not going to overly judge much. But like I said, I am a little surprised. Maybe, maybe once Erica gets back, things will go back to normal. Like I said, uh, it's not my place to overly judge. I mean, he's certainly still under far better care than most situations. But I know I couldn't sleep if that was the case. Yeah, we just did a double grab there. Dip it in some flux. Imran, I want to buy your board view software. Any negotiation? Uh, no, at this point I don't negotiate on that price because it's already very cheap software. And... Yeah, as far as... No, there's just no negotiation on it. I'm sorry. I don't want to sound like an asshole there or anything, but there just isn't any room. Especially considering that I do put out open board view for free. Ah oh man, it's nine o'clock. Damn it. Well, we may have to put this stream on about a three minute hold while I go and do micros insulin. So you guys want to sit tight for three minutes? <sighs> Everyone wanted Oreo to be the store cat mascot. I think the mascot in the sense of he has his own safe area where he's away from all the stuff and things like that then yeah I mean that would be fine that's it Lewis unsubbed he did oh well such is life your parents are glad you just ain't a murderer or a bank robber I don't know you know maybe they would have hoped I was a bank robber and you know make him rich 
do it live. We can wait. Yep. All right. Intermission music. Well, you're not going to get any intermission music. But, um, I'll tell you what. I'll leave the walkie-talkie here. Nothing much is going to happen on it, though. You never know. I'll be back. We are back. Okay, get that out of the way. No one called called in any events, thankfully. This uh, property, this yard is a sufficiently sized yard that, oh man, these are crap gloves. Look at that, just ripped open again. It's a sufficiently large yard that sometimes you need to use the walkie-talkies just so you can communicate with things 
like if we're trying to round up a stray cat, or yeah, we're just trying to do something different ends of the yard, then there's just no other way. Okay. Now we've got to wear the gloves. Got to wear the gloves. Okay. Scratch the nose too with fresh gloves, so it's all good. Now, what was I up to? So we rebuilt most of that. We've got to transfer the cap and the resistor still. Okay. My boards have cooled down now already. So it just takes a little bit longer to get things across. Grab some flux. That's a really dirty way of getting a bit of extra flux, but it does the job. And we just got the one that goes there to go. On the topic of the flex board view pricing, since it was brought up before, the other reason why I don't really have a lot of room to negotiate is because that's a one-off cost for a perpetual usage of that license. Whereas if you compare it to the other competing or similar suites, um, they're all annual renewal type things. So I guess it's a trade-off. And then if you decide, no, I don't want to renew it or update, then you're kind of up the creek because it says, well, thank you for your time, and it shuts down your software. Whereas with FlexBoard View, it's like, all right, that's fine. You don't want to upgrade. We understand that. You're happy with the feature set as you have. So continue to use it and indefinitely. We, you know, you can't get the very latest version, but you're able to keep using the version you have. It's like people who still use WordPerfect 5.1 or something like that, yeah. or Office 2007. Some people are just happy with what they already have, and they don't want to have to be forced to pay more just simply to keep using that. From a business perspective, I completely understand the power of the subscription model. But since I repair myself, and since I have lived in a time where software was gen generally always available as a perpetual type license, then you know, out of respect for the people using my software, I like to maintain that sort of uh, subscription model, even though in terms of business, it costs me money, sort of, in theory. Depends on which MBA you talk to. Ah, uh, good on you, Paul. Wow, I, I'm out of control here. I think I've got a little bit too much hot air going on in there. Just a wee bit. Just a wee little bit. Yeah, this is not pretty, that's for sure. Tried wearing gloves, bad decision, hands swept like a mongrel pig. Ah, it's no good. No. Um, yeah, you really just need to have lots and lots and lots of air conditioning to try and compensate for that, but yeah, I feel for you. No, this was liquid damaged and then it was physically attacked by somebody trying to fix the liquid damage. Okay. I mean, look at this. I was thinking I could try and drop an insult here, but I don't know anyone who does work like this. So obviously the coil's got to come off. 
I want to take it off because you know I'm not confident that's been and that Dio is looking like hell yeah that fuse is probably cactus what are you what the hell is that is that some sort of cocooned cocoon biomorph or something that is scary looking stuff what is that better get the knife Uh, thank you, Imran. I really do appreciate it, honestly. And, you know, I try to provide support as much as I can, whenever I can. So if there are issues, just, you know, support is available. What is this? Honestly, it looks like some sort of silicon-based spider spun it into a blob. It's hard, so I'm guessing it's solder. Yep. Oh shit, it's escape. Great. It's gonna be like aliens now. It's gonna be a face hugger. That is gonna need repairing, I think, is it? Or is that just black oxidization? Something's been ripped from there. Blimey heck, what did this person do to this board? I guess it was a practice board for him. Oh no, no, that's, that's definitely going to need to repair. That will be extraordinarily marginal. There's probably a tiny bit of copper attached there. That will keep this going, but once I scrape through, it's dead. My blade's blunt, damn it. Yeah, the lethal one, that's probably... I would believe that. I know a couple of times I've started hacking away at boards and thinking, oh, wait a second, this is the customer board, not the donor board. But you, you sort of pick that up pretty quickly. So, Nell, are you working again regularly, or are you just taking it easy until you can get a full recovery? Booger, the stuff you pick out of your nose. Not in this case. It definitely didn't qualify as booger material. Really felt like just a whopping great big silicon booba. That sounded like silicon something else, but anyway. Is something supposed to be on this pad? certain there should be. Yep, there is. Uh, yeah, that chap there, that filter. Hey, Nicholas Heidel. Yo, touching the exposed tip of the flux syringe. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Recovered to the point of walking without crutches, how Lewis gave my station away to the Arfane data recovery employees. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Christensen, as far as I know, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Zeros are almost always in shortage. Lewis is a startup. What? Lewis is a startup about how he feels about Apple and don't hold back. Um, out of context here, I think. He does get very verbal about his uh, views on Apple, of course. And I think a lot of that is also serving his personal narrative to make sure that you know, people rally behind someone who's going to hold up a flag like that. And he knows that. So it doesn't matter what his personal, whether he's got moderate personal beliefs about Apple. 
the point is he needs to maintain that appearance of holding the anti-Apple flag to ensure that everybody rallies behind him. I'm sure secretly he wishes he could use a MacBook and an iPhone. I'm almost dead set certain of it. Which could be half the reason why he is dating Erica, because she has a MacBook. And so he was able to fix that MacBook, and now he can use it when she's asleep. That's my theory. Do you watch iPad Rehab? I do occasionally, yes. Uh, I tend to watch uh, Jason SDS Telecom quite a bit more. Uh, it's just a delivery preference, I think. Jessa produces very... Um, Produces content that reminds me a lot of my days of university. She's the lecturer, I'm the student. And she's very good at that. She seems to fall very... She's very comfortable in that role. Which is why she works quite well with her whole training program, things like that. It's just a natural... Sort of... It's just a natural behaviour for her, or it seems that way anyway. Maybe it's not in reality for her, but um, like I said, she does at least give the impression that I love that. And I think she genuinely enjoys it. And I mean that in a good way, not in a, I'm not trying to be sarcastic or facetious or anything like that. I don't know if facetious would have been an appropriate word in that instance, but oh well, I've said it. Alright, the lethal one, Jessa teaches everybody. But if you want hands-on experience, then yeah, you're going to pay the little extra. And go out to the nice countryside of New York State. It's funny to think that in New York State, there's pretty much the same number of people as there are in Australia, as a country. It gives you an idea of just how sparsely populated Australia is. We've got this country that's almost the size of the United States, yet only has the same number of people as there are in one state. Uh, Jonathan, the whole think different thing, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really become more of just a marketing term for him now. I mean, I will admit, they do break the mold moderately frequently. Yeah, they do take the bold move occasionally. Sometimes they take it too far. Uh, damn it. For instance, I think the good bold move was moving everyone to USB ports originally. Well, this is back before USB 1, sort of, yeah, back when... Yeah, the original USB. That I thought was a good bold move. And pushing everyone onto solid state drives on the MacBooks, that was also a bold move and a good one. Likewise, I think their retina screens are really up the standard there. Going to all USB C, I'm not so sure yet. I think the problem was that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they felt that the cloud was cloud and the internet was going to dominate faster than it did. Too many dongles, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm thinking that maybe they were theorizing that the internet and everything else would catch up fast enough that dongles would become a non-event and everything would just go wireless. They're obviously still pursuing that concept because they're as most of you know, they are looking to potentially drop all ports on the iPhones. So they have a vision, but sometimes I think they just get a little bit too wound up in it and they penalize the existing... What? Where the heck did that come from? That surely came from the camera connector. Please come from the camera connector. That's not there anymore. 
doesn't look like uh, it's more from one of these. Uh, who knows? Yeah, Australia with its crap internet speed. I mean, we should have had one of the best internets in the world now. We should have had fiber to the premises all over, but no. No. People fell for three word slogans and it cost us dearly. I'd say we will not see the return of good internet in Australia for at least another 30 years at which point I may not care so much. Damn, that resistor pad got ripped off to hell too. It was a very good opportunity at the time to, oh yeah, fortunately that's not, but yeah, Australia showed its true colors there and pretty much, pretty much signed us off as being the bogans of the Western world that's basically what we said. We said, we're idiots. We can't see a good deal. It was pretty disappointing to be an Australian at that point. Ah, oh, the lethal one. Why is it upsetting you so much? It's been repaired. It's getting help. It'll be okay. It's gonna be okay, and I'll. As long as I don't stuff up that thunderbolt. Yeah, I really wasn't happy with that coil. So they expect to have the MBM rolled out by the end of next year. Yeah, fat likely looking about. It's definitely was a the whole early two thousands, mid two thousands. It's probably when history looks back is going to be seen as a era of significant missed opportunities due to basically due to fear on the population side greed on the corporate side but that's that's a given anyway um, yeah it's, it's one of the few times that i really have been genuinely upset of the outcome of things And it's not really something that the private sector in Australia has a chance of repairing. And I think that's the problem. See, a lot of people like to say, well, you know, it's capitalistic society and, you know, I'm all for that. Uh, let the private sector work it out. But the trouble in Australia is that due to the population density, or rather the lack of it, beyond the main metro centres, the private sector really does not that whole concept does not work essentially for most outside of the main centers Australia is effectively a socialist dependent country there is no way that most of the people living out in these regions would get the things they have if it wasn't for that sort of uh, government structure or that sort of structure. Which is kind of funny because a lot of the people out here in these rural areas are very much, uh, fiscally anyway, uh, well, no, not fiscally, no. On a social matters, they're very right-leaning. But when it comes to money and things like that, they love to squawk about how they hate socialist type concepts. And yet, their existence out here is thanks to the fact that uh, the higher population density centres are effectively subsidising and paying for most of the utilities that we have the pleasure of having out here. 
but they they just don't want to see that because obviously acknowledging that would require having to give up their very staunch point of view. Hey Donald Elliot, let's see. I've missed a few people, sorry, while I was chewing away at that. The Aussie government is a corporate business resident in the US. Uh, oh, well, I don't, yeah, I mean, I've, I know about that whole thing, but conspiracies and paranoia, all that sort of thing aside, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a mess. I used to work for Belong Internet before it went overseas. That's how I got, oh, right. Uh, to see if we're on VDSL 2 at the moment, well, I am anyway. Uh, the lethal, that's um, tech spray. This is one Chris Long uses. There we go. It's pretty good stuff. It's got a finer weave than what the Wick, uh, Gootwick has. I use Gootwick a lot still, but the tech spray does have a finer weave. It doesn't tend to disintegrate as much as the Goot Wick. They're both good wicks. Both good John Wicks. Haha. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, they're both good wicks. They just have different sort of uses. That roll I have there, that's a 25 foot roll. Uh, Stuart, no, the, I am actually surprised, legitimately surprised, that the fiber to the node I have here works very well. I do get a genuine 100 slash 40 connection, and I will get that in terms of performance too. Mostly because there's not many people in this town subscribe to that, especially not on this particular node because I'm on a fringe area I'm basically on the very edge of the town. In fact, if I go across the road from where I am, then they are switched over to wireless uh, MBN, fixed wireless MBN. Anyway, as a consequence, I get exceptionally good performance here, which I find rather amusing. Yeah, I got very lucky. When it when we got signed up and I fired it up and I saw it sinking at uh, I think it was sinking at about 5110 or 11050 rather. I was like, "Whoa." And then when I did my tests and I was getting a full 10 megabytes, not in megabits, 10 megabytes a second with various places like Microsoft and Apple. I was like, "Well, can't complain. So, and that's when I knew I was destined to have to do YouTube videos, especially live ones. Sadly, though, I mean, as fast as the 140 is, it's still slow to upload big things. I mean, it's just inevitable. That's definitely where Gigabit would have been real nice. I guess you can't have everything. Gootwick is cool, but I keep putting the soldering iron through it. Oh, okay, Nick. Yeah, if you're using it for that sort of purpose, then yeah, I do tend to agree. Try the tech spray. Um, let me give you the exact number here. And for those of you who are patriots, it's made in the United States. So yeah, if you get tech spray 1823, the slash, uh, the hyphen 25 just means 25 foot 
So number four, I don't know what that means. 23 I think is 2.3 mil wide. So yeah, tech spray. Made in the USA. Steve K, I've just got copper to the house. So it's about a 120 meter run from the node to this house. And there's basically no other houses in between myself and the node. Not really, anyway. I don't know how close we are to testing to see if this even turns on. The other thing that probably helps me is around about 10 years ago, maybe a little, I think about 10 years ago, rats chewed out the, rats chewed out the copper from, at the street level rather, and so Telstra had to come along and replace the whole lot. So that means the copper I've got from the curb back to the node is actually very new copper, relatively speaking. So the combination of the fact that there's not many people, the new copper, and yeah, I think that I just got lucky. That's all I can really put it down to. I just got real lucky. Oh yeah, we've got to put a fuse in here too. Just trying to clean up the pads on these. Everything just feels so gnarly. Oh, we need a fuse. And unfortunately, someone's driving past. Hey Ed. Hey, Bathtub360. Yeah, Stuart, that's right. Having the node that close really saved me in terms of that respect for the high sync speeds. Like I said, I was quite happily impressed. Uh, I need a backlight fuse. This will do. I know, I know, you're not supposed to take them from other boards, but... I keep forgetting to add them to my order. Just put a wire. That is so naughty and ill. I'm putting leaded solder on the ends just so that it pickles the alloy. It just helps it come up a little easier. I really should put that shield back on the Thunderbolt chip, but oh well. Ah, it's upside down. It'll become an anti-fuse. It'll only work for anti-electrons. Sorry, positrons. Australian fuse. Quite right you are, mate. Yeah, that was a little bit English and Australian. Still, we do have the convict commonality. That was a gecko laughing at me. Come on. This is where the BCM2 tip is nice. You suck up all that excess solder a lot quicker than this. Alrighty.
Hey, Dragon, good to see you. Uh, Christensen, the uh, P is a rating. It's just an easy way to identify which, um, what level the fuse is, whether it's 1 amp, 2 amp, 500 milliamps, whatever. So you have all your different letters from A through to Z, roughly. And each letter represents a particular current trip rating. Yeah, I'm just checking over to see if there's anything else that I've missed which might be catastrophic. Like an L being in chat causing PCH failure. Oh, shoot, yeah. I forgot about all the damn flux in that. Oh, yeah, and the camera. We can leave that off for the moment. We'll do that after we test. But I do have to get the flux out of that socket. Hopefully that's not hiding something nefarious wrong with the socket. It probably is, but we'll see. If not, well, it just means that the socket got a good clean out. Yeah, it seems to be okay, actually. I'm putting the camera connector back on, that's going to be a bit tricky. Fortunately, not as tricky as we rewiring a torn camera connector. Uh, if you do start working on these machines, for the love of goodness, do not pull on the camera cable on the cable. All right, always lever the thing out with um, tipsy sponges or something. Do not grab onto that cable and yank. You might get away with it a few times, but at some point, if you keep up that behaviour, you're going to pull it clean off, and then you'll cry a lot particularly on these sort of screens because the only way to fix it is to wire it directly or get a new screen. I don't think people really want to crack open the whole assembly just to replace the camera cable. Yeah, if we can get fibre here, Siki, I would definitely take that. I would pay $5,000 outright to get fibre. I've got no problem with that. No, it's a business investment. It's fine by me. Some things are just worth it. Dusty sent a picture of him fixing a rip connector. Oh, you mean like the camera one? I mean, there's only about, what, nine? Depends on which one it is, but it's five or nine wires in there. But it's a pain in the butt. Especially when you could have avoided it in the first place. That's the whole thing. It's so fine if it comes to you and it's already ripped, so be it. But uh, when you do it yourself, well, yeah. Alright, here we go. Let's see if we have any luck. Yeah, and tax write off, exactly, Stuart. Seriously? No power whatsoever? Not even 3v42? Alright. Uh, that could mean a blown fuse, or it could mean I've got a bad DC in board, because I don't really know where this one came from. Mm, definitely not you. Why don't I throw out bad DC in boards? Instead you put them aside and think, oh, I'll get to that one later. <laughs> and then you never do, and you just keep picking it back up. With absolutely no current going, I'd say it's a fuse, maybe. Yeah, we've got zero current. Alright. Fun. Let's see if we do see any voltages coming in. Volts. Don't think any power hours on the camera is near the camera connected jumper. Uh, yeah, I'd say I've got a blown fuse. So, so Paul, your software includes 
some boards liver no let's see someone's asked me a question on uh, just let's see what have we got point one eight yeah we're definitely not even getting any power so we're much further up the chain I think someone was asking me if there are um free boards included with flexible view but the thing is there's no real point in that anything that I can provide free won't probably be any good damn why am I so blind right there what are you talking about? Why didn't my software f actually... Uh, that's why. Okay. Normally my software manages the meter so it's always in a suitable voltage mode. Okay, so we do have the power coming in to this um, C2017 area. Like what am I talking about? 7012, yeah, this sort of area. So now we see what's causing our problem here. So we've got this diode here, 7012, which we sh should see around about 6.8 volts on that. That's just above the cap. Let's say we've probably got a problem there. Now we should not be having 18 volts at that point. Which means that diode is cactus. That's a zener diode. And so what should happen is when the power gets to this zener diode, um, it will bleed off any excess voltage that's over the 6.8 volts that it's rated at. That's at least that's what I'm guessing. The 6.8 at the end here is meaning. Um, and so what's happening is the gate. Now this is a p-channel. Without that zener there, the gate is just floating back up to the top and it shuts it off again. So you need that zener to be doing its bleed in order for the gate to open. My software works for me. Sometimes we have disagreements. Yeah, and I can see why that diode wasn't working. Probably wasn't even getting the power in the first place. Yep. Oh, well, that's... Is that charred? It took the bottom right off that diode. Neat. So that diode essentially will result in a permanent bleed current always going through it. But it's coming through a 100k resistor. And so you're dropping 10 volts over 100k. It's pretty much insignificant. I am kind of curious what the hell caused that damage though. And the more fun thing is trying to transplant one of those damn things. And the diode says, ha, huh, yes. <laughs> yeah, lethal one, it's quite possible. <laughs> this is definitely where having a rudimentary knowledge of electronics is quite helpful because then you can understand what's going on in the circuit and let you get away with knowing yeah it lets you know what you can get away with and what you cannot get away with now I'm not suggesting everybody go out and become an electronics engineer or get the qualifications to oh man 
What would help is if Paul could work out where on the board he is. There we go. But it's it's certainly something that can be useful. Ah, uh, solder bridge. Got it. Damn it. You made me say solder. Curse you, solder bridge. Nicely played. There were some pads that were chewed out. Some test pads that got too corroded somewhere. I seem to remember. Did I fix... Oh, no, I fixed the one on the SMC reset area. Could have sworn there was some down here. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm not going to find it now. Oh, look. That is where our alien went. Along with a whole bunch of other crap. So alien was... Uh, maybe it's Terminator T2000. Or at least an early model of it. <laughs> Wish they'd stop trying to... Remake? Oh, there it is, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Uh, I wish I'd stop trying to remake Terminator. Or carry it on, or whatever they're trying to do with it. It's like it's dead, man. Let it go. Imagine if we had... Imagine if they made sequels to The Matrix. That'd be just stupid. Yeah, I know, I know. They've got a fourth one coming out. I was horrified. turn the board around to get to that area cleaner. Come on. Come on. Up you come. By the way, I will point out, if you do get boards that are this damaged, it's probably realistically not economical to repair them, unless you've got nothing else to do on a Saturday night. Oh, starting to sound like myself. But they can provide a certain degree of educational value. That track is behaving weird. Ah, it's because it's gone. It looked like it was there, but it's not. It's been a while since I've seen a new movie that's a good movie. Something that makes you immediately want to watch it again. Oh, that caps are gone too, right there. We'll just, uh... We'll just soar at these a little bit, see who comes alive and who doesn't. Alright, that resistor is also borderline. Yep, yep, yep. You're out of here. You moved. You are gone. If they move when you re uh, sold away into the cap then it's you gotta take them off because it means something's wrong with them either the end cap of the part itself has broken free of the inner uh, component or the pad holding it has 
got issues. Right. So we've done so far, we've done pretty good. We've only had to have one instance of using our brains and that was with the diode. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. Right, we're gonna run a wire from there to there. I think that's where that goes. I guess I better verify that. It'd be a bit embarrassing to connect that up all wrong. Okay, so what are you? The first one after here, so that. Alright, so 10 test pad. Alright, that's good. Ah, the Holy Grail. Yes. With the life of Brian. The humor is getting a little on the old ish side. Not so much that it's old, but I think because it's become almost normalized I don't know I don't use the right words many times for these things there are some people who can speak in a far more educated manner than I can people who have a command of the English language in a far superior way who know words that are more than seven or six letters long when it comes to crosswords, I'm absolutely useless. When it comes to cryptic crosswords, I'm beyond useless. When it comes to Scrabble, I'm probably better off with playing Kid Scrabble. <sighs> to be fair, there are a lot of so-called classic movies that are also well, I shouldn't say classic there was a lot of old movies that were complete crap too so the fortunate thing is that uh, the passing of time makes them disappear more permanently as their celluloid life runs out I've got this at completely the wrong angle Oh, for goodness sake, come on. I will say there's the biggest problem with the silicon mats is they have a tendency to grip the boards too much. Whereas, <coughs> pardon me, if you use a wooden board, it sort of smoothly slips over it. Swearing may commence. God damn. I really need more solder on that point. And everything's sticky at the moment, which means everything gets moved around. Okay. John Wick, yes, that was a good movie. That was a movie that I wasn't expecting to be good, that turned out to be good. It did initially have the, at least on the cover when I saw it in the movie store, it had that kind of, uh, not to be brutal, but then again, maybe I'm being brutal. It kind of looked like another Liam Neeson Taken type cover. And that movie Taken and all the other ones that Liam Neeson seems to make they're all the damn same movie they're just Liam Neeson against the bad guys Liam Neeson against the bad guys I hate them it's like yeah 
Maybe Batman was his better role. Oh shoot, I bent the tips on these, that's not good. Pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. Wish they wouldn't do that. They know where the valuable stuff is. They know they're not supposed to put a hole through that. And yet they do. Now, if the bass is no good, well, what the heck? Everything is just sticking to the... This is what I was talking about, everything is sticking. Um, if the bass is no good, I can just put a temporary one on. A piece of wire? This is really annoying. I am worried about what they did with these RAM chips. Alright, see if we get a green light this time. Still nothing. We've got 8 milliamps, so I think our Zener is now conducting. Still don't have 342. We still don't have any meaningful current drain there. It could be that our 342 regulator is down and out. Having a bad day, maybe. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's 7 million. Okay, that's a little more than what I'd expect out of the Zener. But okay, so we do have our 340 volts. 343, that's good enough. But we don't have much else. Okay. It's it gets a little fun here because the one wire circuit isn't really on. Blast. Okay, let's check on the top of U7100 to see if we have SMC BC OK. <laughs> Yeah, we've got SMC BCOK. Okay. Alright, cool. At least at that point. 
that's the level at U seven thousand. Check what uh, G3 Hot is as well. Well, ah, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, sorry. U7100. Yeah. Could be a bad SMC. But this is basically what you're thinking of U7000, U7100 on this. Let's see what our G3 hot voltage is. down on that. That should be about 8.4 and we're down at 8.196 so we've probably got a bad SMC or something around it. Now given the corrosion we did have in here it wouldn't surprise me. Now what's going to annoy me though is that I'm going to lose that link. There's a bit of corrosion around. Oh, okay I think I may have found what's causing it. This is where test pads in the middle of traces are a pain in the butt. Ideally you should have your test pads spawned out from the actual trace, not in line with the trace. Because otherwise this is what happens. Hey Anna fan. Hey Daniel Knight. So the SMC might actually be okay, but I, yeah, like I said, I'm thinking it might be the trace on that pad. So we replace that resistor, but you'll see that the veer is actually over here, and then there's this. Mind you, it feels like it's got copper there, but let's see. I don't know. If I don't trust it. I got a feeling that if I scrape back this veer cap top, I have a feeling that it actually isn't making contact. Okay, so we've got a bit of copper there. Yeah, damn it. A lie I have found. There is really nothing much in that. No, I don't trust that anyway. I'm going to scrape that back regardless. Because that is marginal at best. You can see that wasn't very far away from not... In fact, just touching it has basically broken it through. Hey, Jeff P. Hey, Venkatesh. Yeah, so that's broken through now, and I barely touched that. Not to say that... It was actually not at fault originally, and I just made it at fault by my forcible behavior. But it still would have ultimately failed. I think that's where these liquid damage boards can be a little bit tricky. 
You can fix things up, get them working today, and then tomorrow they're dead. Oh, you can see the gap in that. Maybe you can't. Uh, I'll think about reflowing it, and I'll. I'm not really expecting this to be the fix, but oh shoot, especially not when I cut through the data lines. I don't even know what this is for, but. We're just hoping for a green light to start with. Still 7 milliamp. Yeah, so much for that. Okie dokie. Hey David Webb. David Webb. Uh, also known as uh, Mr. Bourne. What about there? Could that be a broken trace too? Let's have a look. Could be. See, I mean, it's going to suck if... Yeah, let's just the chest test the continuity. I don't know how Lewis can go till 4 o'clock in the morning, honestly. There are things I can go to 4 o'clock in the morning for, but not this. Yeah, that was marginal. I just touched it and it stopped conducting so we another one of these hey tonstar I uh, pity all you poor viewers out there because you basically have been trapped in a world of unending SMC re uh, unending MacBook repairs at this point. So I started out earlier in the day and then you had eight hours from New York and then once that's finished I picked up again. I uh, hope none of you are holding out for a toilet break. Yeah, his youth could be in his favour. I mean, what is he, 31? You can certainly do that. It starts to hurt around about 35. Quite a bit more. But 31, yeah, it's still doable. Not to worry, I'm wearing diapers. <laughs> Not a great image, but uh, at least you came prepared. I'll give you that. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings non-stop. Or maybe, if you're really nerdy, Star Wars non-stop.
Yep. Uh, David Lewis is 31. Me, on the other hand, I'm 47. 46, 47. Oh, I'm one of those two. I hope I'm 46. I'm pretty sure I'm 46. There we go again. Still seven. Oh, whoops. Uh, do not use diode mode on <laughs> voltage mode. Whoops. Uh, 8.2. All right. Guess we might have to do an SMC after all. Bugger. That's kind of annoying. I was really hoping not to have to do an SMC. I already did one today. Isn't that enough? Is there no end to the demands? Where's the time? 10.12. It's almost my bedtime. Well, it is actually my bedtime. So I'll have you know I'm staying up late for everybody's convenience here. Oh, that was sweet. Love it when it comes off so easy. Not so much when it breaks like that, though. My fault. I was angling it in wrong. So it was to be expected it broke off. This is the new kind of edge bonding that they seem to be using. I'm just using 250 at the moment, so it's it's not a great issue that I'm holding on it. I think I was one of my traces. No, yes, who knows? How the data lines even been pulled up? Are you talking about the I2C lines? We'll give it a reflow just in case junk did get under there. Uh, I suppose we'll check the data lines. Uh, hey, Harry. Hello, Harry. Let's see. Tell you what, I should be checking. Ah, I should try another DC in adapter just in case. Wouldn't want to have done something all that work and find out that it was just an SMC adapter. I mean, a um, cracky, a ba <coughs> bad DC in board. Wouldn't be the first time. Certainly won't be the last. Seven, eight, yeah. derp, nothing happening there. Three Apple Fame Boys, seriously? Three people? Bloody hell. Stuff's getting real. I should check the connector that's here from the DC inboard. We have had that fault before where we can have crack pads or something. Now this was covered all in flux so we don't know what kind of damage might have happened. 
How long do you have long hair? Uh, Anna, when I, well, about 12, 15 years ago, I had it down to the small of my back. It was quite fun doing that. But most of the time I just sort of, I get it cut short-ish and then it just sort of grows out. And I'm too impatient to get it cut. I should check that this one wire actually has continuity. Some of these pins do look a little marginal. I mean, in here it looks okay. Actually, this pin here, see it's got a bit of... What are you? You're the second from the ground. Anything right. So, yeah, similar to me in that respect. Okay. What side of the ground? One, two, one, two. P5 VSO alternate. Nah, that's not it. Where is the cis one wire on this? This one wire is the first after the. F so it's this one here. So we'll check continuity between that. Oh damn it, it's on the other side of the board. Oh, that's just glorious. We'll see if this one wire's coming up. Unfortunately we can't really test it on the connector so well because it's under the flex and it has a very short little um, bump out before it goes straight off to the SMC. Oops. Now in theory... Two, one, two, three... That should be this one wire there. Right? Yep. Oh no, I'll go get some sleep. You can always play it later. Yeah, we've got this one wire. So, no. Uh, it's starting to look more and more like it is the SMC. Oh, someone just messaged me. Ah. Jason Vilma is messaging me, telling me I'm an idiot. Oh, that's very nice of you, Jason. Go shove a coconut up your nostril. Yes. Philip, I'm talking weekly. I'm very sorry. It's called falling asleep on the job. Right, so it's this one wire. It's, uh, it's coming in to the SMC and we're not getting uh, LED voltage, so yeah. Uh, I say we go for SMC. What the heck? Now we can just reflow it up front first. Even though 99% likely we're going to have to completely replace it. But I know some people like to at least try the reflow first. At least I haven't started rubbing my eyes yet. Now keep an eye on those little traces we did.
What the heck? Yeah. We're not going to be reflowing that in a hurry at 250 centigrade. It might not be the SMC, it might be another broken trace somewhere, but uh, at this point, we're just going to try. Something's going on, that's not coming off. I think I might have chickened out then. Well, there's a little bit of the edge bonding stuff there, but it's not actually in touch with it. I think I just chickened out. Leave the one, I'm at 460, 110. And normally they get moving by then. I just have to cool down. Hey, Jason, welcome. Thank you for arriving at this stream. This is a paid promotion. I had to pay for Jason to come here. Jason is available for um, if you've got a stream and you want a celebrity in your stream turning up in your chat, then contact Jason. He'll do it for a fair price. He also does children parties for an extra price. What's the hottest? Uh, 460, I think. I don't know. Maybe 500. The lethal one, I do shill you. I, I shill you as the harbinger of death for CPUs. What more do you want? You turn up and I say, welcome, harbinger of death. And Lewis doesn't deserve shilling at the moment. He's been too naughty. Yeah, 8 milliamp. I gotta admit, that, that is actually pretty weird though. 8. It's almost like I'm missing other rails, in all honesty. But, yeah. Maybe you should just replace U7100 out of an easier precaution. Is he as good as the Wiggles? Oh, believe me. Jason can do some amazing things. Lots of wiggling he can do. Maybe that's not what you were actually meaning, but oh well. Come to think of it, this does look like it's been resoldered. The glossiness seems a little higher than that of the things around it. If you stay quiet and attentive, the solution eventually presents itself. Is that death? Uh, I gotta admit my brain's starting to fail right now on me, I do apologise. It is past my bedtime. That barely even looks like that's attached. It's got nothing to do with it, but... Now this here is a good example of a bad reflow out of the factory. This is suffering something similar to what we call a, um, a pillowing, a head in pillow effect. 
where because of lack of flux probably you know it was just a bit of a bad pace lay down the end cap of the part doesn't actually uh, reflow properly with the solder thing is things like that can be often your rabbit holes I'll fix it up now simply because I saw it but something like that can be why you can end up declaring a board dead simply because of a head and pillow type effect okay well that's fixed up now is SMC reset you know that is not a dumb question thank you for reminding me about that I will now go and check SMC reset low I've now become pretty much just a robot the show must not go on. So it should be that one there. That was not a dumb suggestion at all. That was actually a very good suggestion. Uh, SMC reset low. Thank you very much. It's not... At least I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Pretty damn sure you got that one right there, Anel. Uh, we've got no SMC reset. Crap. Hey Stockholms. Hey Solvac. And uh, Zach Brown. Yes, death. I didn't get a chance to really catch any sleep. I was busy doing other stuff. Oh, hang on. I was measuring the wrong thing. That's SMC L reset L. Ah. Uh, no wonder it looked in a funny place. SMC reset. Oh. Right. SMC reset L is actually up here. I was measuring something different. And down there. Oh, look at that. A bit of junk down there. I'll have to clean that up too. Again, not related. Well, as it is, we do not have SMC reset L anyway. Nor do we have charge reset L, obviously, because it's one and the same. Yep. Okay. We do not have SMC reset L. The force is very buggered with this one. So it could be a supervisor. U55, yep, blah, blah, blah. Can't talk, just work, don't, yeah. And what do you know? That's where we did some work originally. So maybe the chip is bogus? I don't know. Let's have a look. Did I forget something? Did I not bring a part across? Have I made a failed assumption? So many things. Well, let's test it and see what's going on. Let's test the fundamentals. 
So up the top we should be getting uh, 3V42, so we'll test that for V input. And same with, so it's pins 1 and 3. So 1 and 3. Okay, 5127 is just a zero. That's a no stuff, so that actually doesn't play into it at all. So we just want pin one. Gotta love that. Okay, pin one, do we have 342? We do. Yes, with this board, it could be pretty much bloody well in it. Oops, sorry, swearing. Not good. Oh man, 5100 up there. Okay, pin 5. Oops. We've got nothing on the pin 5, which is the reset output. Okay, let's check our SMC on off. Pin 7. I think that's that. Yeah, we got that. That's funny. Um, they have here SMC on, off, L. So what does it actually mean? Does it mean it's on or off? Anyway, uh, pin 6, reset L. That's present. Voltage is a little lower, but I don't think that should really be playing into it. Fifty-one twenty. Yeah, let's see. All right. So at this point, actually, what is this pin? Pin three. Pin three is V in. One twenty-seven. Wait. We got a fair bit of a voltage drop over that, and we shouldn't have. That should be 342 as well. What about on this side? Okay, so there's a problem with this resistor, maybe. Oh, that or it's drawing a lot of current. Um, by the way, Jason, if you're still around, I'm sorry I haven't chatted much. Thank you for dropping in, Jason, wherever you were. What the 5100? That is completely wrong. 5127? I. Well, that'll explain that. How did this happen? That should be a 0 ohm resistor, and we've got a 61k resistor somehow. Okay, we don't know if it's exactly 61k, but that should be 0. 5127. 5127, yeah, something went completely wrong there. Jason just wanted a quickie. Yeah. Ungrateful little so and so. Oh, he's here. He came for the magic tricks. Oh man, sorry. I don't do many magic tricks and they're not very good. The best one I can do is make money disappear and babies cry I like the baby crying one yeah that end caps crow but I wouldn't have thought that to be explicitly at fault there but anyway I guess it is because I could have sworn we took it from here Get another 165. No. 3437. Come on. Give me a break. 3437. Are you kidding me? Uh, the circuitry is going to be the same. Yeah. Helps if the circuitry is on the board. Uh, come on, donors.
just wired on I know you can but uh, I do like to oh man the voice is going on me uh, I do like no nope, that's it voices okay that's more like it I do like to do things properly if I can I'm still definitely finding it very interesting that that resistor reads as high as it does. Which is why I've kept it up there, because I want to measure it again. Anyway, like I said, yes, I could just run a wire, but I'd rather not. Sometimes it is nice to try and do things right. Check that resistor that came off the board just now. It'll probably read zero, I can guarantee you at this point. Okay, I'm not going to guarantee, but it probably will read zero. No, it's actually reading open circuit. Beautiful. Oh man, you don't see that happen very often. Alrighty, that's a dead one. A fuse that did its job. And we can thank Anel for reminding us to check that the SMC reset was present. Thank you, Anel. Oh man, who's talking about putting iPhones in microwaves? I have had to fix a couple of those. That's always comical. Alright, here we go. I think that was definitely one of those that felt like a should be the solution type fixes. So I'm to celebrate that, I'm going to actually put the fan in on this. Okay, fan. So here we go. Let's drag this up into the limelight a little bit, shall we? Oh, green light, green light, and 500 fan spin. Oh, thank you, Anel. Well done. You actually were useful for once in your life instead of just being a speed bump oh man you poor bastard you're gonna be stuck with that for life in so many ways uh, let's plug in the this we've got flashing so that's a good start we do have a chassis for this, so we'll plug it in and see if we get a screen output. Not bad. Not bad at all. Fixed camera. Oh yeah, the lethal one. Damn it. Damn you. You're really, you're becoming maybe not the harbinger of death, but you're bringing in the harbinger of work. Which is close enough to death in some cases. I'm not going to bother with the camera at this point. I just want to see this damn thing boot. Maybe get some good bong. Okay, oops. Yeah, magic tricks, right? Yes, of course, it was all magic. I didn't actually solder anything. That's right, Carolyn C. Thankfully, not brain dead. Very happy about that. Let's see, here we go now with an actual boot. Press option key. Yep. 
since this is 165 we don't need to um it's not going to have a stop start stop start but it does help god damn it did that just bong I forgot to connect the uh, I forgot to connect the keyboard. Let's see. We've got backlight. We don't appear to have do we? Yeah, we've got backlight. This is one six five, so the MRI won't work on it. Not properly anyway. We are flashing. We've got a folder at least. We did have a folder. Yeah, there we go. You can see the flashing folder. We'll plug the MRI in. Oh, wait. I've got something better. What's the point of me doing all this work? Here we go. I've got a Mojave boot. And this time I'll actually plug the keyboard in. Alright Lethal One, thank you very much. Thank you Anel, I greatly appreciate it. Your little tip bit was what changed the course of act course of things here tonight. I am not sure if this solid state drive is gonna work in here. It seems like I'm getting to the point where I need to have a separate one for the 3437s and the 165s. Yeah. We could also have a dead... Um, we could have a dead solid state drive situation. I mean, the interface to it. Okay. Option... So there could be other problems with this board, but I mean, you know, we're at least up and running. Wasn't a cap missing? Uh, no, Olex, the uh, cap was put there. Okay, so that works. Like I said, this MRI will crash. As soon as it hits the sensors section, it will crash. Just get that off to the side. I've got a problem with the fan for some reason. That I wasn't expecting. Then again, that could just be the... Ah, oh, here we go. I'm rubbing my eyes. It's time for me to quit. Yep. Alright. That's it. Um, there are definitely other problems, I think, with this board still. Because I just noticed that the... MagSafe light just went out. It's back on now. There are other issues here, so maybe we can tackle them tomorrow. Uh, I need to crash and burn. It's well past my bedtime. It's almost 11 o'clock. And now that I'm waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30, it's, uh, yeah, it's hurting. So, um, the only thing is, this is actually a HFS one. It's not an APFS one. I explicitly made this one a HFS because I knew that there would be the APFS issues. So, anyway. anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Anel, for giving that one little uh, key piece of information that made me go the right direction. So, yeah, it shows people can help. But then again, at the same time, people can also distract and send you down rabbit holes. So, 50-50 chance there. You all take care. I'll see you next time. Watch out for the dingoes. I'll catch you later.